The following is a production of the University of Minnesota, driven to discover. Hi, this is David Arendelle, your host for PAL Groups, the podcast that focuses on interviews with students who serve as study group leaders. Today, our interview is with Jared from here at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. He serves as a PAL facilitator inside of a pre-calculus one course. Notice in the interview his choice of activities, particularly use of peer cooperative activities, and also notice that he focuses in a mathematics class on vocabulary. So let's go ahead and listen to him as he talks about his favorite activities, why the course is challenging, and also what is he personally developing, personally and professionally, from his experience as a study group leader. So let's listen to Jared. Well, hi, this is David, here for another interview with one of our PAL facilitators here at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, and we're here with Jared. So tell us a little bit about yourself, if you could, please. Sure. Like you said, I am Jared. I am a mathematics major emphasizing in education, senior here at the U, and I'm originally from Zumbro Falls, Minnesota, which is about 20 miles north of Rochester, Minnesota. Tell me about the course that you're serving as a facilitator in. I am facilitating Math 1051, which is Pre-Calc 1. It is mainly composed of freshmen, so first-year students, and most, about half of my students are taking it as a gateway course for another math course. The other half are just taking it to fulfill a liberal arts requirement. Tell us a little bit about what makes math a particularly challenging course, because, you know, it's challenging across the United States, but what are some of the unique things you think about uh, the pre-calculus course that makes it challenging for many students? This class particularly, it's, since it's mainly composed of freshmen, it's having them first learn about what college is like and how to succeed in a college course. But beyond that, it's developing more logic and reasoning skills. Other courses have not yet provided them. Beyond that, I think it's just learning to how to attack and approach problems of different kinds and specifically word problems. Can you take one or two of those activities that you found really useful and then kind of describe them for us for people out here who are listening that might be interested in experimenting with them? One activity that I really like to play at the beginning of the class is called the fly swatter game. And what it entails is putting up or making a sheet of between 6 and 12 vocab words that they have in the sections for their reading, making a picture out of them, and then having two students come up with fly swatters, having either a student yell out a vocab word or yourself as a facilitator yell out a vocab word, and then the first student who swats that picture of the vocab word will receive a point for their team. And this is done three times per pair of students. It's a great way to energize the students at the beginning of the session. So I like doing that. The other thing I like to do is called the circle game. What this is, is you put the students in a circle, obviously, give them each a vocab word, where, and then they hang it in front of their desk. And so one person is in the middle, and that person is like your it person, so kind of like a tag game. The game begins by either the facilitator or another student saying a vocab word, and then the student who's in the middle will try and find that vocab word. If the student finds that vocab word before a different vocab word is yelled by the person who has the vocab word, then they will exchange places with with the last person who had that vocab word. Otherwise, if the student whose vocab word was called says another vocab word, then the game just continues, and it continues until the people exchange places. And then you can just play this for like 10 to 15 minutes at the beginning of the class. And it's a great way for the students to learn vocab words for the session. Also just energize the students and make them more, want to participate more in the session. Um, You spend some limited resource time here working on vocabulary. And in a lot of uh, math tutors and small group programs, they work oftentimes very focused on uh, on problem solving. Tell me why you go and you take that much effort on working on vocabulary. My belief is that vocab is essential to understanding the problem. So in the problem, you may be given a lot of information, but then if you don't know what the information means or how to use it, then you're kind of stuck in the problem. 
by knowing the vocab word and what it means pictorially, you have a better idea of how to apply the information that you're given in a problem. And so that is helping them with the problem solving process. Why is it that students don't automatically ask lots of questions about vocabulary inside of a math session? Is there something about dealing with vocabulary that causes students to shy away from you know, sharing what they don't know? In my personal experience, I know that if I don't understand word right away, I just take it that everybody else does. And so I know personally that it's just like I don't want to be pointed out in the room that I don't know what something means. On the other hand, after that, I would just go home and read material and figure out what that vocab word means. What I'm trying to get at in my sessions is that students, to make the students more comfortable with using the vocab word, and then they can, by using that, they can learn how to use it. Well, when we finish up here, by kind of turning, you've been talking about the students and things you do, let's kind of finish up by looking at you in terms of just reacting what are you personally and professionally receiving out of this um, position as being the peer assisted learning facilitator then? From this position, I have learned a lot of time management skills. So learning how to plan for sessions and kind of allotting time in a session for certain activities. And then out of that, it's also I've also learned how to how to better plan for sessions and how to kind of mix up the activities that we do in session in sessions. Professionally, I've just been able, I've learned that I need to plan things out more carefully and provide more details for not only myself, for the students as well. Because even though I think something may be completely obvious, they don't always do that. I guess it's just beyond this, it's just that I've learned that sometimes you just have to slow down and get away from the board. And a lot of the times, like a teacher's main job may be to teach at a board, but you also have to allow time for students to work among themselves and figure the material out for themselves as well. Well, excellent. Well, thanks a lot, Jared, for sharing your comments. There. You're welcome. Well, thanks for listening to this episode. More information about PAL is available at the website palgroups.org, P-A-L-G-R-O-U-P-S dot O-R-G. Join us next time for another interview about peer-assisted learning. Until then, take good care and good listening.